The Panasonic GH5, clearly the apple of my eye and my favorite camera ever made. It's got capabilities that no other camera in this price range can touch and I love it. But just because it's perfect for me doesn't mean it will be perfect for everybody. And the Sony a6600 is a camera that has a very similar price tag, but much different usability and capabilities. And it actually might work out better for those of you creating online videos. But which one comes out on top? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Who, Sony versus Panasonic. While a large chunk of online creators use Canon cameras, these are the two juggernauts that I'm constantly like, I'm always being torn between because I personally own both camera brands and they are my favorite of all of the camera -dom. They're my favorite. Though they both do what they do well, let's break it down a little bit and compare them against the three most important categories of capabilities. And I really wanna point this out at the beginning of the video. Any negatives that these cameras have that I'm gonna bring up in the duration of this video, I mean, it's really relative because these are both absolutely fantastic and by themselves, are total powerhouses. Really quickly, before we get too far into this video, I'd like to thank the folks over at BH Photo for loaning me this A6600 for the past couple of weeks. The GH5 is my personal camera, and if you'd like to get either, there will be links in the description below. But on to the video. Hopefully I didn't just wake up everybody upstairs. First up, video quality. Now let's do a very brief video specs overview. The Sony a6600 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor and it is housed in the Sony E-mount. Look at that. It can record up to 4K 30 frames per second and can do slow motion in up to 1080p 120 frames per second and it saves that as an 8-bit 420 file. It's got the best phase detection autofocusing system I've ever seen and can do eye detection autofocus while in video, which is something new to Sony cameras as of mid 2019. It's also got the best of the best Sony consumer level battery in the new Z-Type battery. And finally, it has Sony's in-body image stabilization built into the camera body itself, giving all lenses that you use on this, even unstabilized lenses, a little bit of stabilization. The Lumix GH5 looks at the A6600 spec sheet and goes, it lasts a little bit, except for the one thing that we'll talk about, I promise. The GH5 is a 20 megapixel micro four third sensor, and this can record up to 4K 60 frames per second. And it can do up to cinema 4K 24 frames per second, 422 10-bit internal into the camera. If that doesn't mean anything to you, it's good. For slow motion, it can do up to 1080p and 180 frames per second with its variable frame rate mode. So with that, you also get a lot more customization in that range of how you want the steps of slow motion to be. For autofocus, okay, let's talk about that thing that the A6600 laughed back at. For autofocus, it's got the depth from defocus system, which is great for single shot, but it's not very usable for continuous video autofocus, despite all of the firmware updates. This is the one, GH5 stopped laughing when we started talking autofocus. But it also has in-body image stabilization that is so good, it practically means you don't even need a tripod anymore. I mean, we're using one right now, but if, if you want one to hold the camera when you don't want to hold the camera, you'll, you'll still need a tripod. And it also has a gigantic battery, but the gigantic battery isn't like that much different than what came in the GH4 that proceeded before it. So it's, it's good, but it's just not like better than what was before, which the Z-Type battery is miles ahead of the NPFW50 battery. Okay, enough about the specs. How do both cameras match up when it comes to the images they make? Let's all say it together. They both, I mean, they both do fine. They both look outstanding. I'm not one of those internet folks that hates either of these for image quality. Both cameras look absolutely fantastic in 4K. The Sony has a 6K sensor that down samples to 4K and heck, the GH5 does something very similar. Images from both are nice and sharp and both cameras have access to their own respective log format, giving you a little more dynamic range if you wanna do some post-processing. And either, I mean, either camera has easily surpassed the bar for good enough for online video but I am gonna give the technical image quality to the GH5 for its flexibility and recording options. The Sony tops out at 4K at 100 megabits per second, and that's it. If you wanna record in the standard picture profile on either of these cameras, you'll get similar results, and I'll leave the color science argument up to your own personal tastes, but the GH5 gives you 100, 150, and 400 megabit per second option, including 10-bit codecs, and that will really give you flexibility in post if you wanna process your files. Now, I had I spent most of my YouTube career, I guess you could call it, not processing files, but I have been doing it recently, and I really like the 10-bit, 150 megabit option inside of the GH5. Combine that with the Vlog L and an official Lumix LUT or two, and you can get 
fantastic results with very little effort. Plus the GH5 has anamorphic support and so many different video recording options, it basically does everything in this little body. Fair for fair, the Sony looks great and has very good internal processes to not necessarily need all that extra flexibility if you were running and gutting, but I'd rather have all of that information and not need it than need it and not have it. It's, that's dad, that's dad wisdom. But it's time to get on the dad soapbox and let's talk about something that's not as fancy and shiny as 4K, but much more important, audio capabilities. And here it's a pretty even draw. Both cameras have a 3.5 millimeter audio in and a 3.5 millimeter headphone out. Both also have fantastic internal preamps and that shouldn't come as any surprise as I'm always recommending these two brands based off of their audio recording chops. But not just the 3.5 millimeter. Additionally, they both have fantastic little XLR add-ons in the DMW XLR1 for Panasonic and the K3M for Sony, which plugs right into the hot shoe mount and gives you 48 volt phantom power ports right on top of the camera. Now I do prefer the DMW XLR1, we are using it right now in the S1H. I find that it, you don't have to baby it as much, plus it has a cold shoe built right on top of the device if you do wanna put another microphone or wireless transmitter on top, and it doesn't look as goofy. But I also like that the K3M can handle three channels of audio. It does two XLR and one 3.5 millimeter, giving it an ability that the DMW XLR1 doesn't. When it comes right down to it, either is great, and these little add-ons really increase the production value of both cameras, and both cameras can easily operate without either. It's fantastic. That's, I mean, that's great. Hooray, they both look and sound great. But I've got deadlines, Mr. Everyday. So how easy are they to use? Thanks for the question. Me? This category is trickly because both of these cameras excel and fail in different ways. Let's start off with the GH5. This camera is one of my favorite bodies of all time. It's got crazy amounts of customization in that you can change the functionality of just about every single button on here. Plus, it's got dual UHS-2 card slots to handle those potentially bigger files. And that stabilization is so good, I don't even own a gimbal. And the flip screen, the flip screen is fully touch enabled. I, what else do you want? It's just fantastically easy to use, except, and again, repeat after me, the continuous video autofocus, just, it's just not usable in any sense. That's not to say you can't work around it because there are some powerful tools included like tap to focus while in manual focus. I mean, that means if you can physically touch the camera, you don't need the autofocus because you can just tap to focus or the amazing Lumix app that lets you control it for the times that you can't physically be near it. There are plenty of workarounds for that autofocus, but there are situations where you do need tracking autofocus of any kind, and that is the awfully big weakness of this camera. I can't, I can't sugarcoat it for you, GH5. That's the one thing that you can't do. The A6600 does not have a weakness in autofocus. Like I said, hands down, it's currently the best system in the marketplace. It doesn't wobble, it doesn't hunt. If your eye or face is in the frame and you've got face or eye detection on, it will be in focus, even with crazy fast lenses, with just, you could do the shallowest of depths of field and you will be in focus, no problem. And the body of this camera is also pretty darn usable. Like the GH5, there's a lot of customization in changing around the functionality of these buttons and with the new way, because of that battery, they had to rework the grip. So it also feels really good in the hand and it's got a flip up screen so you can continue to monitor yourself while in front of the camera. Where the A6600 stumbles though against the GH5 is it's got a single card slot right here. The IBIS is okay, but it's not great. And the user interface and screen are only touch enabled for focus. So you can't jump around and change the settings as easily easily. So again, much like the image quality, this comes down to personal preference. Do you prefer rock solid autofocus? Then the A6600 easily wins ease of use. But if you like better, literally everything else, then the GH5 is the much easier to use camera. But another really important part of cameras is the overall ecosystem. If you buy a camera, you really have to consider what your upgrade path, like what do you want to do with it or what your options are of growing with the camera because the body does almost nothing for you. And again, this video is kind of tough because this is pretty even in my opinion. It's like we stacked the two, the two most powerful cameras against each other. The Sony E-mount is today my favorite lens mount due to its varied nature of all of the lenses available. Plus, if you buy lenses for the A6600 and decide in the future that you want to get a full frame A7 camera, well, good news, those lenses can come with you. Yes, they will have to be used in APS-C mode with the same crop that you'll get on the A6600, but that's better than nothing. Plus the E-mount is also very adaptable and will allow for all sorts of other lenses to be used 
on this one body. But the Micro Four Thirds, I mean, this is no slouch either, and it's probably, it's as adaptable, if not more adaptable than the E-mount. Heck, basically any lens made for DSLR or larger body can be adapted in some way onto the GH5. And the Micro Four Third native lenses are varied, and they're some of my favorite glass ever. But just like on ease of use, because this had the more power, I am gonna give the A6600 the advantage here because E-mount, it's just great. Like for example, for example in the E-mount discussion, we've been using the Panasonic S1H for this entire video and I love it and I love the GH5, but the lenses don't work with each other. I mean, they were never designed to do that, but either way they don't. If I buy a lens for this, it won't work with this. If we wanted to take the lens from the A6600 and pop it onto my A7 III, it would work. And that's one of the reasons, like that is one of the big reasons that Sony has made huge headways into the camera space. It's nice, it's so nice to only have to worry about one lens mount and not several. And even in my own system, I wish I could simplify it a little more. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which of these do I recommend for the online video creator? I recommend both. We <laughs> copping out. The everyday dad's copping out today. Like I said in the beginning of the video, these are two of the like the best cameras on the market today for creating online content. I mean, they're absolute powerhouses. They're monsters. There's some other hyperbolic statement. Amazing cameras, and either would work perfectly well. If I were personally choosing, and I own one of these, so I did personally choose, I would pick the GH5. I like the video capabilities on display here much more than almost anything on the market but I'm okay with that because I rarely need autofocus. If you do need that autofocus, then I have no problems recommending the A6600 to you. This can do everything. Well, not every, the GH5 does everything, but this can do everything you need for online video content if you're trying to make yours a little bit better. I, I have no problem recommending either of these cameras. And if you like this video, check out the one where I talk about my favorite tips and tricks for the A6600. You might learn a thing or two. I certainly did. Here, I'll put it right. You can click on the A6600 to go watch that video. Click here, click on it. It's just so easy. Click, 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 click. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.